Namaste and welcome to practice today. So I always like to teach what I most need to learn or most need to move through myself. And Beecher and I did a really long walk today through some long grass. And uh, whenever I do that, I do a lot of walking, standing, um, used to run. I feel a lot of constriction or almost compaction in my low back, sacrum, uh, outer hips and hip flexors. And so this also applies to if you're sitting a lot as well, um, because you, you get all that tension and compaction in a lot of those same areas in a different way. And so today we're gonna move through some postures and poses to move some energy and also to release some of that tension. So I'm just gonna start my timer so we don't run over in our practice. And we're just gonna start standing initially and feet hip width wide or a little bit wider. And we're just gonna to start to sway the body and let your arms be loose. It's almost like your arms are pendulums just swinging side to side with centrifugal force of gravity. And you can swing um, big or small or slow or fast. And you can turn your head to either side or just look straight ahead if turning your head makes you feel a little bit dizzy. But we're just kind of letting the hands hit the body as you turn and sway and breathing deep at the same time, intentionally. Sometimes when we're walking or sitting, we forget how we're breathing. So let's begin to breathe intentionally and then slow it down until your arms come to uh, stillness. And then we're just gonna, again, move that energy by shaking and shimmying. And this is where you get to find some joyful movement in just being silly, shaking your arm, shaking the leg, shaking all the jiggly parts, shake, shake, shake. And this really moves the energy that ever, anywhere that it can be stuck and then come to stillness and feet still hip width apart we're going to start moving with our breath into our practice now so as we inhale reach up to the sky intertwine your fingers and palms stretch up as though you're going to touch the sky and exhale release the arms down we're going to do this three times so inhaling reaching up pressing the palms up maybe there's a little bit of a pause at the top of the inhale and slowly release as you exhale one more time inhale press it up and we're going to stay here for a moment keep pressing the palms up and then we're going to release on an exhale release the right hand down to your side and inhale side bend over to that right side really press into that left outer foot and inhale come back press up Exhale, release the left hand down and side bend over to the left. And really inhale into that right side body. And so this is gonna get even into the side hips if you're tight there. On your next inhale, come back to center, press it up. And we're just gonna do side to side, one more round exactly like the first, right hand drops. Inhaling into that left side body. And then your next inhale, we come back up. Press it up and release the left side. Bend over to the left. Inhale into that right side body. Come up on your next inhale. Press it up. And this time we're going to add foot movement in it as well. So we're going to step the right foot back. And we'll keep both hands up here. We're going to side bend over to the left. So right foot's out behind the left foot. Both arms are reaching up and over to the left. And step it to center. Release your arms down. Inhale up. Press it up. And step left foot behind the right. And now we side bend over to the right. So bringing lots of length into that left side body here. Let's do one more time to each side. Step to center. Release the hands down. Let's inhale up, intertwine the fingers, palms face up, right foot steps back. And stretch it over to the left side, maybe even adding a little bit of a twist. And then come back to center, release the arms down. Last one. Inhale up, intertwine, press the palms up, 
Step the left foot back in a diagonal behind your right. Nice stretch here. Nice breath. And then come back to center. I didn't say this at the beginning, but if you have a couple of blocks, bring your blocks to the top of your mat. And let's inhale, reach up to the sky. And as we exhale, we're going to fold forward and release your hands either to your blocks or to the mat, depending how open your hamstrings are. And if you're tight like I am right now, they might not be very open yet. So have your feet hip width apart here. And you can release the top of your head any amount towards the floor that you're able. And then knees can be a little bit bent here. We're creating the action to begin with as though you're spreading your mat apart. And notice how that feels in your sacrum area, your hamstrings, your outer hips, and even in your low back. And you might find as you create that energy of spreading the feet apart, that your forward fold increases a little bit. So we're gonna stay here for a couple of breaths, just noticing all the sensations and wherever you're feeling them as we activate all the muscles in the legs in this stretch. So we're not just stretching passively, we're firing up the muscles of the legs and almost like we're making them um, cling to the bones or tighten up around our bones. And then inhale, halfway lift, hands to your blocks, your shins or the mat. And now we're gonna create the opposite action as we fold forward and your knees can be bent here. Draw your legs toward one another as though you have a block between your legs and you can even press uh, a block between your legs and draw your feet, your legs actively toward one another. Now notice how that changes whatever you're feeling. And again, it can be in the outer hips, in the sacrum. I really notice a lot of sensation when I create the opposite of spreading apart. And that one is my favorite. But both are good to do. Take one more breath here. <clears throat> and then let's inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, bend the knees and rise up. Come all the way up. If you had put your block between your legs to experiment with that, you can take that block up and leave it at the top of your mat in case we need it. And now we're just gonna do some forward folds with our breath, about five or six, maybe seven. And all we're gonna do is inhale, reach up, maybe invite a little back bend. And as we exhale, bending the knees and letting the arms come up behind us. And then inhale, reach up, invite a little back bend. Exhale, bend the knees, create that spread of the feet and reach the arms up behind you. Inhale, let your fingertips sweep the floor. Rise up, invite a back bend. Exhale, bend the knees, sweep the fingers across the floor and up and back behind you. And let's keep moving. Inhale up. Exhale, bend and sweep. Inhale, sweep and up. Keep moving. Exhale. Inhale. If only we could get the floor sweeped while we did our yoga practice. <laughs> Keep moving with a smile on your face, perhaps. Inhale up one more time. Let's do one last one. Exhale. And then release your hands towards the floor. We're still in our forward, forward fold. From our halfway lift, we're stepping the right foot to the back of the mat into our lunge. And as always, we're pressing that front thigh down and get some opening in that side left hip and pressing the back thigh up to help release through the hip flexor and lengthen through all the muscles in the hips and the legs. Take an inhale here. We're moving into reverse lunge. This might be where you want your blocks. So exhaling, reversing. 
lifting those front toes. You probably can't see where I've got my toes lifted because I've got the blocks in the way. But see if you can lift those front toes and press the heel into your mat, which helps to activate all the back leg muscles, the hamstrings and the calves. And you might have your torso halfway lifted with hands on your blocks, or you might be folding over that front leg and your back heels moving closer towards the earth. Inhale, come forward to your lunge. Drop the back knee and inhale both arms up to the sky. So we're not pushing our hips forward, but we're allowing a gentle opening here and keeping that left knee over your ankle. Take one more breath here. And then you can release your right hand. It might be to your hip. It might be to your back heel. Whoops, where's my heel? And we're going to open the front body a little bit more with that left arm reaching up and maybe turning slightly to your right. Take one more breath here. And then we release. Both hands come down to the mat. Lift the back knee. Let's step it back into downward facing dog. So we're just gonna move between down dog and plank pose a few times. Just warming up the body a little bit as well. Inhale forward to plank, lift it through the shoulders, maybe rocking a little bit, getting into the arches. And exhale back, downward facing dog. Two more times like that. Inhale forward to plank. Exhale, downward facing dog. Last one, inhale forward to plank. Exhale, downward facing dog. This time as we inhale forward to plank, you can lower down. Now you can lower through chaturanga. You can lower knees, chin, chest. However it works for you to bring the belly down to the floor. And then inhaling, we rise up into cobra. I like this variation with my hands out to the side and elbows bent because it doesn't allow all my arm strength to help push me up and it relies more on the back as well as some of the lat work here. And it also, as you press your pubic bone down, begins to open the front body and those hip flexors that might be tight. Exhale, release down. Let's open a little bit more here. Hands to the back of your head. Lift your elbows, lift your chest. Lengthen through your legs. And exhale, release down. Let's press up and back child's pose. And if you're really tight in your hips, even child's pose is a hip opener for you. So it's nice to incorporate into your practice even when it's a short one like today. Breathe into your back body here. And if you've been sitting and working on a computer, come up on your fingertips and walk your fingertips to the top of the mat and open through the shoulders and side body. And then your next inhale, come up. Find your downward facing dog. Let's take an inhale here, bend your knees, look between your hands, step, walk, or float to the top of your mat. Inhaling, halfway lift, exhale, let's press those feet away as we fold forward again, bringing some of that opening into the back of the pelvis and the hamstrings and the side hips. Inhale, halfway, bend your knees deeply, press, rise, draw into your heart center. Let's go ahead and move into second side now. So inhaling, reaching up to the sky, and exhaling, we bow forward. Inhaling, our halfway lift. Exhale, stepping the left foot to the back of your mat, coming into your lunge here. So again, hands can be on your blocks. You can be up on your fingertips, but the action of the legs is the same no matter where your hands are. Front thigh is moving towards the earth, trying to bring it at least parallel to the earth. Back thigh is pressing up to the sky and then lengthening through the crown and that back heel. 
So beginning to get some opening. I'm really tight and I can feel an opening even in the outer hip and that quad in this position. Take one more breath here and exhale into your reverse. So you might walk your blocks or your hands back and you might keep your torso parallel to the floor or you might fold over that front leg. Pressing into that heel so that we're not passively stretching, but we're active, activating the muscles as we open the back of the thigh. Take one more breath here. And then let's inhale, rock it back to the top of your mat and drop the back knee. So we come into our low lunge here, inhaling. You could have hands on your front knee or you can reach it up to the sky and open through the front body a little bit more. The more we lengthen up, the more we feel that opening in the front body. Take one more breath here like this, and then we're simply gonna drop that left arm to the hip, maybe to the sacrum, or maybe, whoops, I need another padding under my knee here, or maybe to your back heel. And you're kind of turning your body a little to the left, as well as lifting the heart up. It's almost like a half camel position, but a little less intense. Take one more breath here. And then we bring both hands back down, lifting the back knee, downward facing dog. Let's take one more flow here. And if you don't wanna flow through a vinyasa, you can come into a tabletop. And this can be your heart opening, your vinyasa here. Otherwise, move through your vinyasa, coming to the belly and choosing your back bend. Now I'm gonna choose a back bend where I reach my arms out in front of me and lengthen through the arms, lengthen through the legs and reach in both directions. Take one more breath here. And then the exhale, let's bend the elbows, lift the heart a little bit more, and release down. Let's press up and back child's pose. And this time, for those of you who've been sitting and working at a computer, let's bring your palms together, forehead down, bend the elbows, point your fingers up to the sky. So this is a little more opening through the triceps, the lats, the side body. And then bring the hands down. Let's bring the palms down and stay on the forearms. Come into dolphin. So it's like down dog, but we don't have, we have our elbows down. And now see if you can press into the floor oops, and lift your elbows up. And then see if you can come down to your elbows again and maybe you come down one at a time into your dolphin. And then see if you can press it up. Let's do one more time. Coming down, maybe both together, maybe one at a time. And then pressing, press the arm straight into your down dog. Take one more breath there. And then let's float the, let's float the right leg to the sky in three-legged dog and really lengthen it up. And then let's open into fire hydrant. So that's bending the knee and rolling that right hip open as though I'm trying to face my pelvis towards the wall on my right side. But I'm sending the knee up and my foot out behind me. So it's really opening through the hip flexors. But I keep pressing through my right hand so that my shoulders stay um, even here rather than rolling the shoulders open. And then draw that knee towards your nose as we square the hips, step that foot down. Let's do second side. Float that left leg up in three-legged dog and really lengthen it up and then bend the knee like you're reaching your toes towards your shoulder blades and rolling the hips open to open through the quads and through the hip flexors and pressing through that left hand. One more breath. 
And then draw a knee to the nose, square the hips. Let's come into child's pose. Take a couple breaths in your child's pose, releasing through your uh, wrists. And then let's inhale, rise up, find down dog, just for one breath. Bring your feet wide on your mat in your downward facing dog. And then begin walking your hands back towards your feet. Let your heels come in just a little bit, bend your knees deep. We come into Malasana. Great for stiff knees. <laughs> You're finding out all my ailments here. Very stiff knees after our long walk and also in the hips. And this is a really great opener. So pressing palms together, pressing elbows into knees and knees into elbows. So again, those leg muscles are active. We're not just passively stretching. And this is also a great pose for this time of year being autumn that we're recording this. And we can all use, many of us can use a little extra grounding. This is a very grounding pose for us. Now some of you are into arm balances. This might be where you bring your hands down and move into crow pose, not my forte, but basically bringing your knees into your triceps, bringing your toes together, and then balancing on the hands, maybe building, lifting one foot, the other. Maybe some of you are gonna bit lift both feet. The rest of us, are just gonna lift the hips up, come into our forward fold. And just like we did at the beginning of class, pressing the feet away from one another, it brings a lot of space and opening into the sacrum and letting the head drop. Those of you that are in crow, you can meet us in the forward fold. And then let's all inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, we bow down. Inhale, bend your knees deep like we're in a really deep chair. And press and rise and draw into your heart center. Come to the top of your mat. We are going to move into a little balance. And we've done one-legged chair before. We're going to do it again because that really gets into the hips. You can use blocks here. I'm so stiff, I don't even know if I'll be able to reach my blocks, but we're going to play with the idea of it, and maybe you will be able to. So weight into that left foot. You can start with hands on your hips, or you can start with hands in heart center, softly bending both knees and bringing right ankle onto that left knee. And so we're pressing that left knee away. We're flexing, sorry, we're pressing that right knee away and flexing that right foot. Whoops. And then we're gonna sit down a little bit deeper. Now, if you're able to bring your hands to your blocks, you can do that. You can also have your hands at your heart center, or you can reach up to the sky in one-legged chair. I'm gonna try the blocks today and see if I can sit a little bit lower. This is a progression into another pose, which is an arm balance. And some of you might be able to bring your hands all the way to the floor as you sit even deeper, but really feel that opening in that right outer hip and the strengthening in the left one. Take one more breath here. And then we're gonna step that right foot to the back of our mat, I'm turned the wrong way, into our lunge. So we're in a lunge position here once again. And let's drop the back knee. Inhale, reach to the sky. And then bring your left hand to your left knee and let's side bend over to the left side. So getting a little more into that right hip flexor here. And then coming back to center, let's bring both hands down either to your blocks or to the mat, lifting your back knee. Let's step it forward, come into our forward fold. Inhale, halfway lift. And exhale, we bow, bend the knees, rise up. And draw into the heart center. 
And let's move into our second side for our one-legged chair. I'm going to stay facing the top of my mat here for this side. So beginning to bend both knees, crossing left ankle over right, pressing that, that bent knee, pressing it away from you towards the floor, flexing that left foot as well. And then begin to sit down. And there's so many variations that you can take here with hands at heart center, reaching up in your one-legged chair. You can even intertwine your hands behind your back. I'm gonna take the blocks position because I'm working on this and sitting as low as I can and pressing that left knee away so that you feel that opening in the left hip, which is gonna help us facilitate the next pose, which is gonna be pigeon pose. So nice breath here. One more breath, feel into that hip. And then we're gonna release that left foot out behind us into our lunge, dropping the back knee. Inhale, both arms up, lengthen up, and then releasing right hand to that right knee and inhaling, side bend over to your right side. So left arms reaching up and over and lengthening through that whole left side body, through that left hip flexor, maybe looking up. And then your next inhale, come back to center, bring both, both hands down, lift the back knee, and let's step it back into downward facing dog here. And from here, we're gonna move into our pigeon pose that we were just preparing for here. So let's float right leg to the sky and three-legged dog. And as you exhale, draw that knee towards your wrist and find your way into pigeon pose. So I always like to start in an upright pigeon to begin with because that really is opening that back left hip flexor as we lift the heart. And so rather than back bending, it's like you're drawing your heart up and forward and sending that back foot back. So you're creating space in the low back rather than compaction because that's what we're trying to alleviate is feeling of compaction. Take one more breath in your upright pigeon and then you can begin to move into sleeping pigeon, giving your forehead somewhere to rest, stacked fists, a block or your mat. Some of you who are a little more flexy might move into different variations of king pigeon by reaching one hand or both hands to the foot behind you. Or you can also come onto your um, forearm and reach it back. So that brings a lot of opening in the hip flexor and in the quad muscles. And you can stay here rather than sleeping, uh, sleeping pigeon if you're really looking for that front body opening. And I've got some pretty tight hip flexors, so as muscle today, so I'm gonna stay here for another breath. Breathe into wherever you're feeling the tight spaces in whichever variation of this pigeon you've taken. And then let's all begin to release out of your variation and find your way back into downward facing dog. Or you can also find your way back to tabletop and move into pigeon on your second side from tabletop. Otherwise, if you're in dog, float left leg up to the sky. And as you exhale, knee moves towards your wrist. Again, we're starting in our upright pigeon here to open through the front body. Drawing the, the heart up and forward and sending the back foot back so that the opening is front body, heart, as well as hip flexor. One more breath here. And then move into either your sleeping pigeon, bringing the forehead towards the mat or your fists or a block, or into king pigeon variations by bending that back leg, reaching an arm back, or bringing right arm down 
um, to the forearm and reaching back with the left arm. This feels like a better variation for me rather than the upright king pigeon. But choose the one that is right for your body today, whatever that looks like. Let's just take one more breath wherever you're at today. And then begin to release gently, gracefully out of your posture, back into downward facing dog. Take a nice breath. Some of you might want a vinyasa. Some of us are going to come into child's pose. And then from here, we're almost at the end of our 30 minute class. So we're going to offer a little twist. And then I'm going to ask you to be sure to take a Shavasana. That is the most important part of our practice in order to integrate everything that we did and allow the cells, the energy, the body, the mind to settle before we move back into our day. So I'm just moving into a classic twist here. Um, you can have right leg straight out in front of you. You can have right leg curled underneath you. Let's all wrap our right arm around that left leg. The left knee is the one that's up here. And we're twisting to our left. So left hand is behind you. Draw the belly in and across to your left side. And with every exhale, energetically continue to draw the belly towards the spine and twist the belly button towards the left. And at the same time, you can be drawing this left knee in towards your belly. And for me, that gives a lot of opening in this left outer hip still where I'm feeling very tight and you might be the same. And let the twist come from your belly. Take one more breath. And then we unwind to center, a little counter twist to the other side. And then let's extend both legs. We're going just a minute over here. And now either left leg stays straight or draw left leg underneath. Right leg crosses over, either crossing over your straight leg or your bent knee left arm is wrapping around that right knee that's pointing up. So drawing the belly towards the right, and you can physically use your hand to draw that belly towards the right. It actually feels really good. And then draw that knee in, bring some opening into that outer right hip at the same time that we're opening through the spine and twisting to our right. And remember, every exhale, as the navel center moves towards the spine, it's also twisting towards that right side. And every inhale, think of the spine lengthening up and making space between every vertebra. Stay for one more breath. And then we exhale, unwind back to center. Take an inhale and center and lengthen and exhale to your opposite side. Coming back to center. And then you can unwind, release. And now from here, I'll invite you to move into a Shavasana and put a timer on for no less than three minutes for this 30 minute practice, preferably five to seven minutes for your Shavasana, because we just as a society don't take enough time for ourselves to be still. Um, and you can also combine this practice with the other practice that you received in this uh, email or add the meditation at the end after your Shavasana. So giving you lots of options depending how much time you have, but don't skip Shavasana. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining me for your practice today. Have a beautiful Shavasana, and <laughs> we'll see you next day. Namaste.